Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I want to tell you about my experiences of riding a motorcycle in India. In 1996 I went to India on business. Uh, I went to Delhi and I spent a few days um, as well in Mumbai. Um, stayed in a beautiful hotel um, on the coast, the Taj Mahal. It was really lovely. Um, and I really liked India. I'd never been to India before and it was a place that I, I was fascinated by. Um, it, it, I really enjoyed being there. I liked the food and the people and just the sort of the, this sort of complete difference to everything I, I knew. Um, it, it was just totally different. Um, and so back in about 2000 or 2001 I had the opportunity to go on a motorcycle holiday to a different part of India. There was a company called Blazing Trails who were, um, they, I saw the advert in Bike Magazine and they were, they were running this um, holiday at the end of November um, and it was costing £999 and it was going to be I think 19 days I think it was um, motorcycling round India on a Royal Enfield 350 Bullet. So I thought that sounded great fun. I, I, I really, it appealed to me a lot. Um, so I booked it and, um, and I didn't know what to take. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be warm, obviously, because you're in India, um, but you were also at the tail end of the monsoon season. So it could be wet um, and it turned out to be a little bit wet on, on one day. <clears throat> so I um, anyway I decided I would ride in jeans and a jean jacket and an open faced helmet and that would have to do. So anyway um, t time came to go, <clears throat> got on the plane, flew to I think we flew to Dubai to get some cheap fuel and then we went on to Goa. <clears throat> Arrived in Goa and um, it was very interesting actually um, to see that um, some of the more um, if you like bohemian passengers on the plane chose to um, change into Indian more Indian type garb on the plane so they got on you know in a suit and they got off in a you know in, in a pajamas uh, which was a bit um, unusual let's put it that way so um, got off the plane and got to collect my luggage obviously and I had one hold all because the deal with the company, the tour company, was that they supply the bike. They, there's a van taking the luggage and they've got backup uh, mechanics and medics and all the rest of it. So w when I came out through um, passport control, there was this mountain of luggage. I mean, you know, 20 feet high cases, literally for the entire plane's cases were just been chucked in a heap. No, no, no. There was um, a carousel running around the room, but it wasn't used. Uh, they just chucked them in the middle. So, of course, it took ages to, to get um, cases because, <clears throat> you know, you had a plane with 300 people on it and, you know, upwards of 300 um, cases. But, of course, nobody was in the right place for where their case was. Anyway, um, got my case eventually, went, went to change some money. Um, and I changed £225 into um, Indian rupees. And then I went outside and I um, met the organisers for the first time. And obviously some of the other members of the group were there too. Um, the, um, out of the group of 12, um, I, at the time I was about 41, there was a younger couple, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, and they were about 30, but everyone else, the other nine, were all, gen generally speaking, elderly gents who had had a Royal Enfield in their youth and they wanted to relive the experience riding a, a, an Enfield in India. So uh, we, we, we went off to our hotel um, and the next day we met the bikes. Um, so they're all relatively new at that time, uh, Royal Enfield bullets. Um, with right hand gear shift, left hand brake, which of course is completely alien to me and I'm sure loads of other people too. <clears throat> and um, we went for a little ride out just so that we could get used to them. Uh, I mean absolutely no go whatsoever. Um, Tyres like um, Bakelite, um, <laughs> I mean the, the gear box was knackered, you know, even though they were new. 
Um, I mean, they were utterly dreadful um, machines. Um, to me, that is. I mean, to the old um, duffers on the tour, they thought they were bloody wonderful. You know, oh, yeah, it takes me back to my youth. You know, and he's sort of chugging away on this thing. Um, anyway, uh, day after that, um, we, we set off. And the plan was very much to uh, do a bit of a loop and then go down to the Western Ghats and then into the hills, uh, down to a place called um, Uti. Um, uh, and then we were going to go head towards the coast and then go up the coast and head back to um, Goa. And it was all, all together, it was going to be about um, 2,000 kilometres, um, you know, roughly. Um, so anyway, uh, set off. And the first day of riding, we, we hit rain, uh, quite a lot of rain, in fact. Uh, I mean, I didn't have any wet weather gear. Um, I just got wet. Um, but it, it rained, I'd say, heavily most of the morning. But then the afternoon, the sun came out, and of course you dried, because um, it was just warm and nice. Um, so anyway, set off, heading towards the Western Ghats. Um, so much that is different riding in India at that time. I mean, you, you know, you're sharing the road with with trucks, huge trucks with no brakes. But a lot of hooters, a hell of a lot of very, very loud hooters. Um, buses with people hanging off them, uh, pigs running across the road, uh, dogs, cows, uh, potholes that you could lose a child in. Uh, I mean, it was quite, you know, it was an amazing experience to be in this like mass of vibrancy. It was incredible. Um, one of the things I read up on before I went was um, if you want if you want to go, then take pens um, because people like having a pen and they don't have many. I mean, poor people, because don't forget, we were going out into where ordinary people live. We weren't going in, when in Mumbai, just like most capital cities and most big cities, they're simply not representative of the country. Uh, and India was no different. You know, once you left Goa, which is relatively Western, I mean, it was Portuguese until not that long ago. Um, once you got into India proper, you know, I mean, th th there was lots of people with not very much. Um, it's not to say they were unhappy or they were poverty stricken. They just didn't have very much. Um, but certainly by our standards. And... Um, so anyway, we headed off and through the countryside, saw loads and loads of stuff. I remember we saw, um, oh, sorry, the pens. I forgot that I was on the pens, wasn't I? Yeah. So with the pens, I mean, when we would stop for fuel, um, you would get children appearing from absolutely nowhere that would just crowd around you and want to see the bike. Or you, if so, once we stopped outside of school, and um, not deliberately, it's just that, we're, you know, where we, where we chose to just have a break. Um, and all these school children, all in their uniforms, they all wanted to practice their English and they wanted a pen. Well, I'd taken 50 pens. Um, I got rid of the lot um, and they were very grateful to have a, a big biro, um, which was nice. I mean, I, I thought it was a nice thing to do. Um, and we filled up with fuel and, and as required and, and carried on on our journey. Um, our evenings were spent mostly in hotels, but sometimes in hostels. Um, we sometimes slept in dormitories, um, which showed up who snored like a goddamn donkey and who didn't. Um, I don't make any noise when I sleep at all, apart from gentle breathing. I don't make any noise. Um, but there was one guy on the trip i mean jesus if you ended up sharing a room with him you'd you know murder would be on the agenda because he just drove you nuts he just snored so bloody loud it's terrible terrible anyway um we went to a place called the badra wildlife sanctuary which was amazing saw elephants um fed elephants um incredible absolutely incredible and then we went to a place called mysore which is quite a big city uh, in in sort of near the south of India, um, um, just an amazing experience of colours and noise and people and and food. Um, I mean, you know, we I'm sure lots of you will enjoy an Indian meal. I mean, I I certainly do. But my God, what, until you've had one in India that's been cooked by the side of the road, you haven't had you haven't had one. Um, 
Another thing that um, happened to me, uh, we were riding along once and um, I saw this lad um, with um, a sort of hand cart with a whole um, thing of bananas. Don't know what you call it, stem, a whole stem of bananas, the entire thing. Uh, that have been ripened on the plant obviously i mean when we get bananas certainly in the uk uh, they, they come over green they're completely unripe and they ripen them with gas um which is entirely healthy i mean it's no problem with that whatsoever um but they this banana stem had quite obviously been um ripened on the plant and then cut down and he was selling them from the roadside and these bananas, they were short. I mean, not more than maybe, I don't know, 12 or 13 centimetres long and fat. Um, and I, I bought three for about three rupees or something. Um, and my God, you, you've never tasted a banana like it. It was absolutely bursting with banana. It, it was, it was in, uh, nothing like the sort of bananas we get in the UK. Not a patch. It could have been a different fruit, quite frankly. It was so bloody nice. Uh, absolutely lovely. Um, and then we'd stop for lunch in places, um, you know, by the roadside. There was one town we stopped at for lunch and we went to this cafe and, you know, they had the menu and what have you. Anyway, we ordered um, the executive lunch, OK, because we weren't mucking around. And the executive lunch, they brought out this big stainless steel um, tray and put it in front of you and on this tray there were five pots um you know sort of this big like a mug you uh, like a mug of tea side and um then they came around with five different types of curry one in each mug and then this guy came around with this great big bowl and a ladle and put out this great lump of um cut, uh, rice and plonked it in the middle and that was your lunch yeah and we all each of us had had this um um, it was absolutely gorgeous and you eat with your hands uh, with, with you know with your fingers obviously there's no no knife and fork or anything um, it god it was so bloody good and if you wanted more you just asked for more um, and I think we had a beer um, at, at 25p you know, that's what it tr um, translated as 25p for this absolutely incredible incredible meal um, other places we went to we, we I remember staying in one town um, and we went out for a walk in the evening and there were guys um, uh, we're underneath trucks, OK, repairing the trucks. And what they'd done in order to get light is taken an oil filter and stuck a rag, broken it open, stuck a rag in it, a used oil filter. And they were using that as a candle, um, this, this oil filter light. It's, it's incredible and, and you know I mean and not, I don't mean they were like just checking the tire pressures they were dropping a gearbox you know out of a truck using these things as light it, it was extraordinary absolutely extraordinary um, I mean the roads were appalling uh, the condition uh, I mean obviously they weren't as bad as they are in England at the moment but I mean they were absolutely appalling potholes everywhere uh, huge potholes um, you know, you didn't dare go off the main, you know, you're weaving in and out of potholes and watching out for the cow, dog, you know, you get these, because in India they don't have different dogs, um, certainly not when I was there or the area I went into, you know, like in, in most countries or certainly in, in developed countries, I use the word developed guardedly, um, they have, you know, about 47 different dog, it's just dog, they all look exactly the same, uh, they're all as rough as guts, because um, they have a pretty crap life and they'll chase after you and bite you you know uh, uh, for fun and um, one of our guys got bitten quite badly um by a dog and of course he, he had tetanus obviously because we had to get jabbed up to the eyeballs in order to go on the trip um but he yeah he's, his ankle was in a bit of a bad way for a few days but amazing uh, another time we stopped in a place and one of the guys um yeah so talking about the bikes okay how reliable were the bikes um uh, not very um my bike broke down once some bikes broke down many times um one bloke um split somehow the the inside of the um fork tube I mean, how this happened is anybody's guess, but it basically just cracked in half. 
Um, another guy, when we stopped for the night somewhere, realised that his front wheel had cracked in half um, across across the uh, the wheel, not not longitudinally across it. I mean, it was literally being held together by the tyre, and. Um, so the, the, the people, the, the organisers said, don't worry, we, we'll get that sorted out. Because one of the things with a Royal Enfield um, bullet in India is you can get them repaired anywhere, absolutely anywhere. So um, they, they went off and found some bloke and he came back, took the, took the wheel. In the morning, the wheel was back on the bike. You, you would not have known there was a repair. It was incredible. It cost two pounds to repair this wheel. Um, and you would never have known that the, there was a repair on it. it. It was extraordinary, and they'd done it overnight. Amazing. Um, so we went off to, um, um, so we went to Mysore. We went to Uti, uh, which is um, a, a hill station where the um, the rulers, you know, as, as they used to be years ago, used to go because it was too hot in the summer to stay on the lowlands. Um, went walked in the tea plantations, um, rode on an elephant. I, I mean, it, it, so many experiences that couldn't possibly be remembered or crammed into into this short video. Um, but it, it was amazing, a, a beautiful, beautiful country, and lovely, lovely people. Um, then we started heading to the coast, and the plan was to roughly ride up the coast back to Goa. Uh, slept on the beach uh, two nights. Um, on one night we slept on this cove. We, we walked down this track, left the bikes and walked down this track and a guy had come with us, this, this Indian chap, to cook our dinner. And he, he cooked dinner for like 15 people on a little camp so um, fire, not a stove, I'm just talking a fire with twigs, uh, and served it to us on leaves you know, rice and curry, and I mean, just incredible, incredible flavours that he knocked up out of nothing, um, and obviously mostly, almost exclusively vegetarian, you know, which suited me fine. So then, then um, we went to another beach, slept on the beach, swam, and one of the things that I really noticed, actually, when I, I remember it one, on one of the beach mornings, um, I wanted to go for a swim early, and what was unusual was that the sand was colder than the sea. Um, I mean, I, I grew up um, on an island where you'd swim a great deal. And, um, and there, the sea was always cold um, and the sand was warm. But in, in India, in the, certainly in the morning, it was the other way around. The sand was cold, but the sea was warm. Uh, it's really odd, that. So, um, then we headed back to Goa. Uh, we had two days, um, a, a very nice hotel in Goa, and we just chilled and, and you know, sort of talked about the holiday. I mean, we'd all had an incredible time. Um, apart from me and the young couple, um, everyone crashed their bike at some point, you know, came off it. Um, the, the, the tyres, you know, they had as much grip as a bar of soap. I mean, they were just bloody useless. Um, and um, so anyway, we, we, we got back to go and then we were leaving. Um, so we anyway, went to the airport, um, got dropped off at the airport and um, got on the plane and we're, we're heading back to the UK and everyone's, you know, talking about stuff that they've experienced. <clears throat> and we're, we're taking off and um, we're just sort of on the point of rotation in this plane and there's a, this massive explosion and the whole plane shuddered. I mean, this is a big plane. It was with a company called Air 2000, which were a pretty good airline in their day. I mean, obviously they don't exist now. Um, but the whole plane, and it was a big plane, shuddered. And the pilot slammed the front wheel back down onto the runway. The air, um, you know, the oxygen masks were coming out. People were screaming. There's always someone screaming. I mean, it was completely unnecessary, but anyway. Um, and, and, and then we sort of came to a halt. Um, and of course, no one knows what the heck's going on. Anyway, the pilot came out and um, he said, basically, we've had a, a quite a major bird strike. Uh, we don't know how badly damaged the engine is, but um, I'm going to go and have a look and find out. So anyway, he went out and they got a stepladder or whatever um, and had a look. And basically, the engine was buggered. 
Um, there were, I think there were seven of the blades on the turbine that were just not there anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what bird they hit. It must have been a turkey or something. Um, but anyway, we weren't going anywhere. So we were in the care of the airline, which was fine, you know. And um, so anyway, we, we went off um, and we were taken to this place called the Goa Renaissance Resort, which is this sort of five plus star resort where people go and they say oh yes we've been to India but they haven't been to India at all they could have been in Tenerife with curry um, because they never leave the resort um, and we went there and we're all dirty you know I mean we've been motorcycling for nearly you know the thick end of three weeks and and you know our clothes are scruffy and we're you know we're dusty and mucky and you know all the rest of it and, and we're going into this place which is absolutely pristine um, it was a very surreal experience, um, particularly after what we'd been through, you know, because we'd been meeting ordinary people and eating food next to ordinary people. And this this place was just so far removed from it. Anyway, the um, the, the plane, they flew a new engine in. Oh, no, they flew a new plane in. That's right. Yeah, that they, they were going to need to fly a new engine in. So the next day and um, or the day after, I'm not sure how many nights we were there, two or three, uh, one or two nights. Um, and a, a plane turned up and we got on it and we, we went back to the UK. Um, and that was the end of my Indian journey, my, in my Indian um, motorcycle journey, which was amazing. Um, I, I absolutely loved India. I, I thought it was a fascinating country uh, and it's changed so much in the last 20 years. I mean, I haven't been back to India since then. Um, I would go, uh, definitely I would, I would go again. Um, but this time I, I'd, I'd do it on my own. You know, I'd go over, rent a bike and I'd just go um, and just see what happened. Um, because, you know, India by and large, certainly for men, uh, is, is a safe country. Um, I mean, obviously, you take precautions. You do in any foreign, well, you do anywhere, quite honestly, even in Bridge North, where they steal motorbikes. Um, but yeah, yeah, fantastic trip. So I may not have remembered everything exactly as as, as it happened, but um, I hope you got a flavour for the sort of thing that that I experienced. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be great. Um, and comment below. Have you been to India? You know, what were your experiences of motorcycling in, in India? Do you want to go? You know, is, is it on your list of places to go? Um, and um, and if, if you like listening to me talk, <laughs> then please subscribe and, uh, and that would really be great. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.